I want to share with you an important and life-changing promise I made to my son. And I'm going to show you how I'm using some exciting, low-cost, emerging technology that anyone can use. You can go to the store and buy it right now, called the Internet of Things, and how I'm using that technology to keep that promise to my son. But before we, we do that, I want to give you a little information about myself. In fact, it's kind of a, a little bit of an uncomfortable truth. And unless you knew me, you wouldn't necessarily know that about me. And it was something I dreaded to share as I went on a first date about five years ago. And I'm, and I'm going on this date, and I'm meeting this, this amazing looking nurse, and she's about 10 years younger than I am, and, uh, and we sit down at the restaurant, and, and we're going through all of the normal pleasantries that you go through in a first date. You know, I'm lying about how much I work out. <laughs> She's lying about how much she likes dating short guys. <laughs> you know, and it's going, it's going really well. <laughs> And I say, okay, now, now is the time. Now is, now is the time I need to drop this bomb because it's going really well. And I said, I, I need to let you know that I drive a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I was driving a minivan that night was because I only had one vehicle. And that vehicle needed to fit my son's wheelchair. You see, I was going on a date that night as a single dad raising my three-year-old son with complex special needs completely on my own. So let me introduce you to Adrian. This is Adrian. Now, Adrian is eight years old in this picture, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, or six or seven, but uh, <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> and Adrian is a great, great kid. He loves football, and he loves sports, and he loves all these normal things that typical kids love. But Adrian was born at 28 weeks. He was born two pounds, nine ounces. He was an identical twin, and his brother Blaze passed away the day after Christmas in 2008. Adrian has global developmental delays, cerebral palsy. Adrian is unable to walk or talk, and he will require complete and total care for the rest of his life. So as I was a single dad raising Adrian, we had a lot of adventures together. And some weeks were good, and some weeks were bad or hard. But every night, I would rock Adrian to sleep in a rocking chair. I would tell him what we would do the next day, how much I loved him, and how I promised him I would always take care of him as long as I could. Now, that was five years ago. And a lot can happen in five years. For, for example, I, I went on that date, and uh, you can imagine how well the date went. We, uh, we got married. <laughs> And that's my wife, Bree, there. That's my three-year-old, Charlie. And there's Adrian. And, uh, uh, and, you know, what's really exciting is that we're actually expecting a baby in three weeks. Yeah. And what's even funnier is that we moved out of our house today. And, and we move into our new house tomorrow. And... As my uh, wife reminded me, this was an excellent, excellent time to prepare for 
a TED Talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we've talked about Adrian for a little bit, but let's talk about Charlie. Now there's Charlie when he was a little baby. Uh, uh, he's three now. Uh, uh, and Charlie is an awesome, awesome kid. He is analytical, and he is intelligent, and he challenges us, and we worry. We worry about Charlie. You know, we worry about all of the, the typical things that parents worry about. We worry about where he'll go to school, what kind of friends he'll have, uh, where he'll go to college, what we'll do with his room when he moves out. <laughs> You know, all those things. But for Adrian, when we talk about his future, it's a little bit different. And I want to show you an interesting slide here in that this is what I'm calling uh, care intensity. And uh, so as we know, when all children are born, uh, they start off with a high degree of care intensity. But as they learn new skills and be learn to become more independent, such as changing their clothes and, you know, uh, uh, don't need to be changed anymore and all these things, that level of care intensity starts to go down over time. But for Adrian, that level of care starts high and continues to go higher as he gets older. Now, the good news is, though, that we live in a society where we care about kids and families like mine and kids like Adrian. I'm pretty sure we still do. And there are amazing organizations out there whose sole mission is to support my family and improve the quality of life for kids like Adrian. But the problem is that they're in crisis too. And my family has been on a waiting list for two years for in-home help and support. So as an engineer, I've had to rethink and re-engineer how we think about providing that level of care. And we can do this with something called the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is basically, very simply, almost anything that can be turned on or off can be connected to the internet and controlled from your cell phone. Frightening, but also exhilarating at the same time. And these are all kinds of different things. These are uh, wireless outlets and temperature sensors and cameras and voice assistants like the uh, Amazon uh, Dot or Echo or Google Home. There's even wireless network connected light bulbs. So what I want to do is I want to take you on a short little journey, if you will, with me on a uh, typical nighttime, sleeping, morning time routine in our home. And I think that uh, you will be able to relate to a few things and a few other things. I'm going to highlight some interesting challenges that might be new to you. And uh, so let's start, let's start with the dreaded bedtime routine, right? So bedtime in our house uh, runs between 30 minutes and eight hours. <laughs> uh, kind of depends, it depends on when we start. And interestingly enough, our three-year-old turns into sort of this dehydrated philosopher. <laughs> It's very, very thirsty. <laughs> and ask some of life's deepest, deepest questions. <laughs> but for Adrian, that conversation, it's, it's a little bit different. So what we worry about when we put him to bed is a really basic but really hard question to answer. Is he too hot or is he too cold? Now think about it for a second. When I put him to bed every night and I put the covers on him, he can't take those covers off. He can't tell me he's too hot 
He can't get up out of bed. So it's something I, I agonize over. You know, how do we know if he's too hot or cold when he sleeps? So what we do is we take this really interesting uh, little sensor here. And this sensor is made to read the temperature in your home. And it connects to your smartphone really, really easily. It's just a, a press of a button, and it, and it connects uh, in there. And, and it tells you the temperature, easy enough. But what I do is I put it in Adrian's bed. So at night, I can check at any time, and I can see if he's too hot or he's too cold. In addition, it can alert my phone and vibrate if he's too hot. But we can also take it one step further and use a wireless outlet like this that it says, if he's too cold, turn on the space heater. And when he's at just the right temperature, turn it off again. So what's really cool about this is this is a $30 sensor. And we just answered a really basic but difficult question for $30. Now, let's talk about, now all the kids are in bed, and they're sleeping, and uh, uh, as everyone knows, uh, all children always sleep through the night. <laughs> For some reason, we put Charlie in bed, and then uh, we wake up in the morning, and he's in bed with us. And we're not really sure how that happens. It's amazing. But uh, for Adrian, again, really basic question. How do we know that he slept okay? I mean, how do we know that? Because Adrian doesn't understand the concept of time. He could wake up at 11 p.m. and thinks it's a new day. And he could be up for the next 24 hours. So we need to know if he's sleeping okay. And we can do that by using this uh, interesting device here. Uh, this is a wireless network camera connects into your, your Wi-Fi uh, at home. Again, just a simple app you install on your phone. And this camera, it uh, has infrared capabilities, can see at night, uh, can also be controlled so it can move 360 degrees, and it can also record. So what we do is we put this in his room, and we put it up there, and it watches him while he sleeps. And it also detects if there's movement. So if there's movement, it can let us know. In addition, it also takes recordings so that we can check the next day to see if he's sleeping okay or what kind of night he had, or even if there was any seizure activity. Now this camera is $60. So we just added the ability to see if he's sleeping okay and possibly see if there's seizures happening at night for $60. But, so, the kids have been asleep, they wake up in the morning, and all kids are always happy whenever they wake up. <laughs> in the interest of full disclosure, if you don't have kids, that is a complete falsehood. That is not true. <laughs> but for Charlie, if he's upset in the morning, we can give him options, we can ask him what kind of cereal he wants, if he wants to color, if he wants to do things that will basically sort of ease that, that transition as he starts his day. But again, for Adrian, it's a little bit different. Because when Adrian gets upset, he doesn't always know how to calm himself down. So it's really important that we create a sensory room that's familiar, relaxing, and something that he really, really enjoys. So before I get Adrian up out of bed every day, I press a button on my, on my cell phone, and it does a number of things. And what it does is it tells this network-connected light bulb to turn on and set at a certain level. In addition, it also tells this Amazon Echo here to play sound and his favorite music. And it also turns on his cartoons. So as we bring him out into the world every day, he is greeted to a warm, relaxing, friendly environment and really starts his day off right. But 
We're not going to stop there. We're going to keep going. And I want to show you something really interesting. Now, this is uh, something that Adrian is working on right now. And uh, he just started on it. And this is called a Toby Dynavox. And this device operates only through eye gaze, meaning that it operates only off of where you look on the screen. And it's really cool because it can tell all of these things what to do. It can turn on light bulbs, it can adjust the temperature, it can talk, integrates with Facebook, and all those things. So it's really, really exciting. It's really, really exciting. Now, it's estimated by the year 2020, there will be over 1 billion Internet of Things devices connected to the Internet. As long as these things remain affordable, easy to use, and accessible, the way we think about how we provide care to our kids and our family and friends with disabilities, it's really, really bright. It's really bright. So I want to leave you with two points tonight. There are three 0.9 million children born in the United States each year. Of those, a few thousand will share a story just like Adrian's. Imagine if we funded agencies and we let them fulfill their missions and we, we, they enabled families and we passed along this knowledge and the innovation and the training and we continue to innovate together. Think about the possibility I mean, it's right in front of us. It's right there. Let's be, uh, let's be brutally honest for a second. It's all right. This is a free, open venue of ideas. But let's be honest. Adrian will never go to college. He'll never be married. He'll never have a job. And it will always cost society more to provide to him than he will ever, ever be able to give back. So why should you care? And the answer for you, I hope, is that the dignity of human life matters. And how we take care of those most vulnerable in our society, that's that's how future generations will judge us. But the answer for me? The answer for me is love. And I made a promise. Thank you. <laughs>